much as possible. Any questions that you have can be submitted via the chat feature and then we'll, uh, we'll answer them later in the session. Okay, so my name is Sharia Desai and I'm a current junior at Hobart and William Smith from Cape Coral, Florida. I'm a biology major with double minors in anthropology and public policy. On campus, I'm a member of the William Smith Laurel Honor Society and I'm in the Writing Colleagues program. I've also worked with Professor Dimitriou from the physics department on the Rocks at Sea team, where we participate in a rocket launch at NASA. And lastly, I work on campus jobs at Student Activities, the William Smith Dean's Office, and of course, Res Ed as a resident assistant or an RA. This year, I'm an RA in Jackson, which is one of the main first year residences. I'm here today with Assistant Dean for Student Engagement, Shelly Basilio. Hi, everyone. So Shelly, to get us started, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your work at the colleges? Absolutely. Uh, as Shreya mentioned, my name is Shelly Basilio and I'm the Assistant Dean of Student Engagement here at Hobart and William Smith. And I'm excited to be spending some time with you this morning talking about all of the great things that uh, HWS residential education has to offer. I've been at the institution for seven years in residential education. Uh, I also am fortunate enough to uh, assist with our first generation initiative supporting uh, first generation college students as well as working with our posse scholars. So as I mentioned, I'm an RA in a first year residence hall and the options are somewhat different than they are for upper class students. Could you explain the options that students can choose from? Yeah, so for first year students and upper class students, it is a little bit different. For first year students, the majority of our students will be in traditional double rooms with a roommate, uh, mostly in um, traditional style halls um, to have that sort of traditional experience with an RA, with a lounge, with common bathrooms and things like that. Um, so we have, I mean, we have some, some different options for first years, but the majority will end up in double rooms, getting that sort of traditional experience. Um, for upper class students, the options are different in that you have autonomy over your, uh, your living situation. Uh, we have 52 different properties on campus. So all four years of your experience living on campus can look vastly different. We have theme houses on campus, we have traditional halls, we have apartment style, uh, we have you know, single rooms, triples, quad suites. We've, we really do run the gamut and I think that makes us special for being such a small institution to have 52 different options for our students. Yeah, and on campus, I was also really lucky because I lived in a place called Comstock Pond View, and I did have a great double experience. They're really good about, we'll talk about this in a second, they're really good about matching you up with someone whose likes and interests match up with yours very well. So even though my roommates, my roommate and I were polar opposites, we were connected so well. So the double situation and living in the first year communities is really nice. I love a good success story. <laughs> Um, so we, we do offer something that's pretty unique as well uh, for first year students specifically called living learning communities. The nice thing about a living learning community is every first year takes a first year seminar or an FSEM as we call it. And in a living learning community, all of the students who are in that class together live together on the floor. And the really cool thing is the faculty member comes into the hall and teaches your class right in your lounge space, which is really awesome. So um, you can sort of roll out of bed and head down to your classroom. Everyone is having that similar academic experience. So students are able to collaborate a lot more. Students uh, in those living learning communities also are getting some extra face time with their FSEM advisor who is also uh, their faculty member for that class. So it's a really unique experience. Students love it. Um, and we seem to be sort of expanding that program as, as much as we can. Uh, and the faculty have really enjoyed being able to get to know students on a different level. Yeah. And I'm an RA on a first year community right now, as you know, in Jackson. And although it's not a living learning community, a lot of those residence halls, they take the same FSEM. So I would say out of my 20 
six residents, I want to say, that about 24 of them um, live in the same, they have the same FSEM. So it's great to see them work together on assignments. They can gather in the common room um, and talk about the professor and what work is assigned. So it's just a really great community um, to have. Okay, so just to acknowledge, I do see the chat question. We will answer all chat questions at the end of this uh, session. So the next question is the other piece of first year housing that I know is a top concern for incoming students is roommate selection. Could you explain how roommates are matched up and your advice on how to choose a roommate before coming to campus? Yeah, absolutely. So we take a lot of time to place students together. Intentionality is something that we're really proud of. We want to make sure that students are having a really great roommate experience. So there's a variety of factors that we take into consideration when placing roommates together. Uh, that being said, residential education supports the, the academic mission. So we are going to take your FSEM course uh, and do our best to place you with other people in your FSEM. Um, and then from there, we take preferences into consideration around uh, single gender housing versus all gender housing, substance free housing, um, and then students sort of individual preferences as well. So you can certainly uh, talk with other students and make a sort of tentative plan to room together. We do everything we can to try to accommodate those roommate groups together. It doesn't always work depending on the student's academic schedule. Um, so I would just say if, if you are planning to, to find that perfect roommate in the Facebook group or, or somewhere else, just, just know that it's a tentative plan. We'll do everything we can, but we can't guarantee roommate groups. Yeah, and I remember my first year, I was really nervous about having a roommate. And because you're kind of living with a stranger for a full year, and I took the roommate quiz and as I was doing it, it asked questions like, oh, are you an early riser or are you um, a night owl? And at first I was like, oh, I'm an early riser. Like I want to get, like, I want to be a better me in college or something. And then my mom was like, what are you doing? Like, you have to be honest with yourself so that you can get a roommate that matches you. So I would say when you're doing this roommate selection, make sure that you're honest with yourself and with the questionnaire so that they can match you up with the best possible roommate. Um, so, Absolutely. And for any parents of, that are on the call, I would encourage you to step out of the room while your child fills out that preference form. Uh, it's really important for students to be as honest with us as possible so that we can make sure that they're having an ideal uh, experience with a roommate. And if a student is messy and writes clean because they're hoping to be clean or they want you to think that they are, uh, that's when we start to run into some, some issues. So please allow your students a little bit of privacy so that they can be honest with us about their preferences. Yes, I agree with that. My mom was like over my shoulder saying like, oh, are you sure you want to pick that? Because there was like music choices and everything. So yeah, I agree with that. Thank you, Shelly. Yeah, um, I also, if we could take a minute, I am in a first year residence hall room right now. We know that it's really difficult with the state of COVID-19. So I'm coming to you live from a first year room in Jackson Hall that is our showroom. Um, so I'm gonna take a minute and just unplug here and show you around a little bit. So this is a standard double room in Jackson Hall, which is our one of our co-ed first year rooms. Um, as you can see, it's pretty spacious. We've got a, a bed here. Uh, there's a nice desk and desk chair with an individual closet here for each student. And then coming sort of around the room, you'll see the other towel dresser here as well as the bed. Nice window. There's a lot of natural light in here. I definitely took a few selfies before coming on the call. Um, but the rooms are pretty spacious. Every student has a twin uh, bed, uh, mattress, uh, desk, desk chair, closet or wardrobe and a dresser. Um, so the rooms are, are stocked with the furniture and then we'll, I think we'll be talking a little bit more about items to bring and items to leave at home in a little bit. Yeah. 
Okay, so talking about those items, my last question for you before we open it up to the chat and the audience, uh, do you have any recommendations on what students should or should not bring with them? Shopping for dorm accessories can be really fun, but I think there are a lot of myths about what is or is not needed for your room. Yeah, so what I would recommend is making a list of all of the clothing that you think you're going to need and then cut that list in half. It is a spacious room, uh, but it's not, it, you know, it is a residence hall and, and we don't want you to be overwhelmed with, you know, seven jackets and, you know, 18 pairs of shoes and things like that. It is central New York. We have beautiful weather. It also gets very snowy. Uh, so take the, the clothes you think you need and cut them in half. There's a great outlet mall about 15, 20 minutes away. If you need additional stuff, there are plenty of locations to get it. Um, we want your residence hall room to feel like home. So we would encourage you to to get yourself some nice new bedding for college, to bring some photos of friends and family. Pets are certainly important as well. Um, you know, a desk lamp or something like that, it, if you plan to do most of your studying in your room might be important. We'd encourage you to talk with your roommate about um, sharing a fridge uh, if, you, if you would like to do that, um, you know, rugs and things like that. The majority of rooms are tile. A five by seven rug would be a great size for a residence hall room that would make it feel a little extra cozy. Uh, things to leave at home, candles, anything like that, incense. Uh, you really don't need any kitchen appliances, so nothing, no hot plates or anything like that. The, the food is, is good. All first years are on the Finger Lakes meal plan, so you'll have every opportunity to get meals and snacks throughout the day, really at any time during the day, uh, because your meal plan is unlimited. And Shelly kind of talked about this, like talking with your roommate to make sure you're not bringing double of things. That was really important for myself and my roommate because she already had a fridge and I was literally at Walmart about to buy a fridge. So then because we communicated and exchanged um, numbers after getting the information when you get the roommate selection, then we were able to cut the costs in half per se, which happens when you have a roommate. So we only had to get one fridge, one mirror, one TV, if you want it, um, things like that, and just communicate with them beforehand and it'll cut down a lot. Um, okay, so thank you, Shelly, for your answers to those questions. So let's see what, oh, there's a lot of questions in the chat. Okay, so the first question is, do resident counselors plan social events for first years to get to know each other? Tria, do you want to take that one since that's sort of your wheelhouse? Yeah, sure. So yeah, so RAs, resident assistants, um, we do plan social events for first years to get to know each other. As a uh, RA in the first year residence halls, I myself like to do, um, besides the first floor meeting, which is mandatory for all residents, um, I like to do either like a movie night together or maybe ex uh, especially on the first year learning communities where they have the same classes. Um, I like to do an event surrounded about that class. So maybe if you can like bring in the FSEM professor or um, they all have, a lot of them have writing colleagues in their classes. So sometimes bringing that writing colleague to the space instead of at the library, it can make them um, like not only come together as a community, but be more involved in their course and open to the resources available for them. And yeah, all RAs plan events like this, whether it's a movie night, maybe like hot cocoa. Um, there's just a lot of different events that we plan and we try to make sure to foster that community really well. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Shelly. Yeah, so I, I'm just so proud of our RAs. They really do an amazing job. They understand what it was like to be a first year student. They understand the importance of that connection to the RAs and to the fellow residents on the floor. We do have a, a model that we use to make sure that RAs are having events around a lot of different categories, including academic support. So aside from sort of just the fun events where you know students are making their own mud mask or milkshakes or whatever, we may also bring in a faculty member to talk about advising or choosing classes for the next semester and things like that. So the, the events are really wide ranging. Uh, we also plan some larger scale events so that 
our students in Jackson Hall are also working and meeting students in Hershon, which is a, you know, another first year hall to make sure that students are getting to know as many people as they can. Yeah, some of my favorite highlights from this semester were the study mentors from um, the Center for Teaching and Learning or CTL. They came to JPR and it was an event for any first, like anyone who wants to come. Um, and they gave study tips for the first years about office hours, teaching fellows, other resources for um, first years to make sure that they have that academic success in their first year. So on to the next question, is the living learning communities for all first years or is it something that you sign up for? That's a great question. So as we get closer uh, to students being here and toward the end of the semester, students will fill out a preference form about their first year seminar choices. I believe you rank them uh, or pick your top 12 or something like that. There is a ranking system uh, and it will say right on that form which uh, first year seminars are living learning communities and which ones aren't. Not every FSEM is a living learning community, so not every first year will be in the living learning community, but every first year who's not in a living learning community will still hopefully be living near or with the students in their FSEM. We have our amazing RAs on those floors as well who are still planning programs and some of those co-curricular events. So even if you're not in an, in an LLC or a living learning community, you'll still be well connected. Yes, and I can speak to that too because I actually lived in a all-female housing situation and so I didn't live in an LLC, but my RA was really great. It was a first year community, so you're still with all first years. Um, but it was a really great way to get to know people because you don't have that LLC and that common class to rely on. So the RAs do a really good job of supplementing um, that so that you can still have a good community on your first year. Um, someone asks, can any student apply to be an RA? That's a great question. So after your first year on campus, anyone would be eligible to apply for the RA position. We want you to take that first year uh, and sort of get your bearings, figure out what classes you enjoy, what clubs you want to be a part of, sort of, you know, work through your identity on campus and, and who you want to be at HWS and, and sort of go through all of the, the positives and the challenging parts of being a brand new college student. After that, we then let every student who wishes to apply for the position, because at that point we know you've been through it, you can support incoming first years in a way that's gonna help them be successful. Yeah. Um, someone else asked, are all floors and bathrooms co-ed? Great question. So no, not all floors or buildings are co-ed. We do have some single gender floors in first year areas. We also have some single gender residence halls. So on the William Smith Hill, we have a couple of buildings that are for female identified students. And in the mini quad, we have some buildings housing first year students who are for male identified students. And then we also have some all gender buildings and all gender floors. Uh, all of those floors do have uh, single gender restrooms uh, as well as gender neutral restrooms in each building. And I know as an RA that um, on a, in a first year hall, we asked our residents to, um, at the beginning of the year, at that mandatory first floor meeting, are you comfortable with the bathroom situation? And then we accommodated accordingly to that. So um, having those single gender ba bathrooms are important for some people and other people like that co-ed. So we do take that into account. Um, and then how do bathrooms and showers work? Great question. Uh, so in the majority of first year halls, they are large common bathrooms. So on Jackson 1, which is where I am right now, there are two large bathrooms, one for male identified students, one for female identified students with multiple uh, stalls and multiple shower stalls, multiple sinks. Uh, so it's a very traditional experience. How can we take the roommate quiz and when do we find out about our roommate assignment? Uh, yeah, so there will be a whole orientation online portal with lots of information um, that, that you'll be able to fill out. We typically send roommate matches out toward uh, the beginning of August and that's all through your HWS email account. 
Are freshmen allowed to have cars on campus? Yes. Do you want to answer that? Yeah, I was just about to say, yes, you're allowed to have your car on campus. You'll just have to register it with campus safety. And then um, depending on what year you are and where you're living, there are restrictions about where you can park. And then also um, our director of campus safety, I forgot what his official title is, but Marty Corbett, he usually sends out emails um, also saying those restrictions, especially when we have games and things like that. Um, different field lots will be closed so that there's parking for parents and visitors. Um, but you are allowed to have a car on campus. And then are there laundry rooms available to the students? Is there a cost? I can speak to that as well. Um, there are laundry rooms available to the students. Um, for example, in JPR, there's actually two separate laundry rooms just to help um, navigate that load of students that need to do their laundry right before break or right when they come to school. Um, and then the cost is, oh my gosh, it's been a while since I've been on campus. One dollar fifty cents, yes. $1.50 for um, both the dryer and the washer. And a lot of people come to campus with quarters. You do not need them. It's all on your one card. Um, and you just, there's an app on the app store. You upload the money through there onto your one card. And then you just swipe it before you do your laundry. And then voila, the laundry is done. Our washers and dryers are also smart. So you can log in and see how many washers and dryers are available at any given time. So before you lug, you know, your three or four laundry baskets down the stairs because your parents are coming to visit, you can make sure that those washers and dryers are available. You can also set up a text service through our, our laundry site so that you'll get a, a message when your laundry is ready to be moved to the dryer or when your dryer is done uh, to help alleviate some of that stress as well. Trina, while we're talking about it, do you want to talk about uh, the other uses for one card? Oh yeah, for sure. So on your one card, you can also, it also has your snack money as well. So if you go to on, on campus dining, for example, um, the cellar pub, the cafe, or Au Bon Pen, which is our coffee shop on campus, all of those will take snack money. And as first years, you are on the Finger Lakes plan, which means that you get $325 a semester, I believe, to spend on those on campus, but use it wisely because finals week will come, you want that coffee, and then you've used up all your snack money. Um, you can also, so laundry is something separate. It's called community cash, and it is on your one card as well. And that community cash can actually be used downtown at several um, local businesses. Uh, for example, I believe it's Opus, Mark's Pizzeria. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. There's a whole list online. And then lastly, your one card is used to get into Saga, which is the main dining option. And that comes through meal swipes. So that doesn't take away from your community cash or your snack money. And then you obviously need your one card to get into your residence hall. So always make sure that you have your one card on you, whether you keep it in like one of those pockets on the back of your um, phone, or if you keep it with a little lanyard with your keys, always have your one card on you. Um, okay, we just got a lot more questions. Um, oh, do, do residence halls have common kitchen spaces? That's a great question. Not every hall has a kitchen, but the majority of them do. Uh, some FSM courses also utilize kitchens, so uh, there are some classes where you'll be cooking together, so those uh, classes definitely um, are, are placed in a building with the kitchen. The majority of, of buildings do have a kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and also in that kitchen, there's usually like common things to use like pots and pans and things like that so that can be something else to add on to your um, shopping list for your room that we do have some pots and pans available but you should bring some of your own as well if you're planning to cook uh, and then is there a curfew a time you have to be back in your rooms or in the building <laughs> no there That's is a great question there is not. That is a great question, though, because some universities are stricter than others. But I can speak from personal experience that when you're at the library and you have three papers due and you started them the night before, you're allowed to stay out until 5 a.m. in the 24 hour room and then come back and get some good sleep before the exam tomorrow. 
And then what are the difficulties international students may have? Yeah, that's a great question. So coming from a place other than the United States adds its whole own uh, level of anxiety, right? And understanding cultures and things like that. So uh, our international students do have a pre-orientation. So they come to campus even earlier than other first year students so that they can get acclimated and get some additional support. So on day one, we're making sure that everybody is, is ready to go. And I think that the RAs um, kind of help with the difficulties as well. We have several RAs that are international students. And if you live in a theme house later on, um, we also have house managers that help with that. And of course, we have our cultural clubs on campus too, where you can find a community um, on campus. Theme housing is really sort of unique and special to HWS as well. We touched on this a little bit earlier. We have 52 buildings on campus, right? And about 25 of them are themed communities or themed houses on campus. That is all student run, which is really special. Uh, so every year we have these houses that we accept proposals for and students write some really amazing proposals for all different types of themes from cancer research, uh, raising money and things like that to some cultural houses like our Muslim life and culture house to give students the opportunity in their sophomore, junior or senior year to be living in a smaller community based around a common theme. They're very, very popular on campus. Most of them have kitchen spaces and it feels more like a home and more like a small community. Uh, so I, I think that's something that we're, we're really proud of and, and that makes us unique. Um, does living in an LLC automatically mean living in JPR? Yes, at the time being, all of our living learning communities are in Jackson, Potter, and Reese. And the reason for that is we have done some renovations to the lounge spaces in those buildings to accommodate uh, classrooms. So your lounge space is a multifunctional space in Jackson, Potter, and Reese for the most part. So all of the tables are on wheels, all of the chairs are on wheels. They are equipped with classroom technology and whiteboards and things like that so that during the day, they're a very academic space. Your faculty member is coming in to, to facilitate your course. And then in the evening, students may be working together on something or they may be just hanging out are watching a movie. So uh, right now, all of those all of those LLCs are in JPR. Is there a social media platform where you can talk with other first years coming to HWS? That's a good question. I'm gonna hand that one over to Kate. Well, actually there is, but okay. Kate can also answer it if she wants to. I don't know. Okay, I'll just, yeah, okay. So on um, HWS, there is, I believe my first year, they sent it out through an email and they said like there's a Facebook group and it is technically a closed group, but you just have to request to be in it and they accept everyone that's obviously coming to HWS. So on Facebook in the search bar, you just have to write in Hobart and William Smith Colleges, class of, are you guys class of 2024, I believe? Wow, I feel old. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I put I put the information in there. Sorry, it's just further down in the chat. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, I um, put in the exact name. You're going to want to search for that exact name. Oh, perfect. And then on that group chat, on that Facebook group chat, I know that um, my class, someone posted like a group me and then people did their numbers, but that's a little um, unofficial there. Yeah, I would say that that's a good starting place. Like we'll accept you, like you can start connecting and introducing yourself, but then a lot of students do tend to do their own thing, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then are all roommates random? Good question. No, not all roommates are random. If a student requests a roommate, uh, if they, they request each other, if those students are in the same first year seminar, we can, we can usually accommodate those requests. Sometimes if students aren't in the same first year seminar, we're able to, to, uh, to accept that request as well. So it's really dependent on uh, a variety of, 
of preferences and, and academic placement to determine if we'll be able to accept a roommate request. You should absolutely still send them in. And if we can accommodate them, we absolutely will. And if we can't, um, then we'll work with you to make sure that, that you're still having a, a positive roommate experience. How was your experience moving in? How did it differ from where you came? Like if you came from a city? So I'm guessing that question might be for me. Um, my experience moving in was really positive. My favorite part of it is that we have people called orientation mentors, your OMs, and they guide you through your whole orientation experience, including moving you in. So I was really nervous because I do not frequent the gym as much as I should probably. And I was like, how am I and my sister, who is also the same as me, um, going to move in a whole car full of items um, to um, a floor that was below level, for example, or if you're on the third floor or something. And it's really nice because the OMs actually help you move in everything. They literally go to your, meet you at your car as you drive up to JPR or as you drive up to any of the first year communities. And then they literally help you take the boxes from your car straight to your room. And they are so fast about it too. You will move in within not even 10, 15 minutes. Um, so moving in was really easy and I really appreciated that because the day can be kind of stressful with learning about new friends, learning about new classes and having to keep to the orientation schedule, which is chock full of all these amazing things on campus. And then how did it differ from where I came from? So I am from sunny Cape Coral, Florida. Um, it's a bit of a retirement community, but it's home. And I actually have two closets. That's how I dealt with it. And so I have my Florida closet here, which is like rompers, sundresses, shorts, t-shirts. That's more like Geneva in the summer and Geneva right now, probably maybe with the sun. And then I also have a Geneva, New York closet where I have the winter coat, I have the scarves, I have the gloves, the, the hand warmers, I had to learn about those. So that's how I dealt with it. And um, it's a lot different from where I came from, but I really wanted that different experience. Talking about coming from a city, I know my friends from New York City, they kind of liked the difference between like the hustle and bustle of a city and then going to a quiet, a quiet close-knit community in Geneva, New York, not only do you get really involved and get to know other students, other residents, and other professors on campus and faculty and staff, but you also really get to know the community members of, G of Geneva, which is really nice, through our Boys and Girls Club and other service opportunities. Um, so that's what I would say. Shelly, do you have anything to add? I think, I think you talked about that beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, um, if we're going to say this later too, but if you have any specific questions about that change and transition, we're going to put our emails in there in the chat and you can always ask us later. Um, and then will orientation 2020 be postponed because of COVID-19? I don't believe so. Yeah. I answered that as well. So at, at this point, we're planning on starting everything on time orientation and classes. Thank you. Sorry, that was the next, next message. Um, and when you commit to HWS, do you get your one card information right away? What app is there for the laundry? So the one card information, um, as long as you do all of your pre-orientation um, beforehand, so that's all those documents they ask you to submit online, including the picture for your one card, you should get it upon arrival. And then um, the app for laundry, it's called Get, G-E-T. Um, it's on the app store, it's free. And then it's all through that app. You can also go online um, on HWS and you can upload the money through there as well. It just takes um, a credit or debit card and then um, links it to your account and then you can add money to your laundry whenever you need it. I think from an admissions checklist point of view, one of the most important things that students don't always do is upload their picture. So you'll have a, a checklist item when you um, matriculate with us that, and you'll have deadlines for all of them. Just make sure you do all the things and you should be set. 
and you want to get that picture in because that's your picture for the next four years, okay? So that's your one card and that's your picture for the next four years. I just want to just put that out there because some people did not know that and they had their high school senior picture for up until their senior year of college. Okay, so I don't see any more questions. Does anybody um, have any more questions or questions that I didn't answer already and might have missed in the chat? Oh, there's one now. Um, how many classes can we take maximum? So um, you start with just usually everyone takes four classes per semester. You are allowed to take um, five as long as you have a dean's approval and then any more than five and you're considered an extra I mean maybe ad admissions knows more about this but um you're considered like um you're taking more classes than the than the maximum so then you have to get even more special approval from the deans and I believe there's an added cost and then you can also take um, three classes, but any less than that, and you're considered a part-time student. So usually it's four, and then if you get special dean's approval, five. When is the deadline to accept Hobart and William Smith admission? May 1. At this point, we have not pushed back our deadline. We have had a lot of questions about that. Um, if they're extenuating circumstances, you can contact us individually to discuss those, but otherwise, it's still May 1. And then the last question, are all of the dorms or the residence halls uh, described on the website? Are there virtual tours available for each of the first year residence halls? So there is some information on the website about all of the different residence halls. I do believe admissions is working diligently to see what options are available to get uh, some tours of, of more of the first year halls and things like that so that we can do our very best to recreate the experience you'd have if we were able to have admitted students day. So I am certain that, that our admissions folks will have more information to come on that to make sure that we're doing everything we can to show you what it's really like to be inside our, our first year halls. Okay, so as that was the last question in the chat. Oh, <laughs> two, wait, three more. Oh, sorry. Um, Kate just said, we hope to have a first year housing video soon to answer that person's question. And then someone else said, how excited are you to get back on campus? Um, I am extremely excited as uh, I live, as I'm living at home due to the COVID-19 uh, global pandemic. And I'm excited to get back on campus to have my own space because RAs do get their own room. And I have it decorated just so with lights around the room and everything. And the reason why I have this HWS lovely background is because my parents renovated the whole house while we were gone because <laughs> they're empty nesters. And my room is now a storage closet. So um, I am really excited to get back on campus, to get back to friends, that cohort of like-minded individuals, and get back to my res ed family. Um, thank you for your question. And then um, how was the first month for you at HWS? Did you feel homesick? How did you get used to the lifestyle? Um, so my first month at HWS, I would say, I think it was pretty positive, but there definitely was a bit of a learning curve because for the first time, you're on your own, pretty much. Um, you go to your classes, you don't have anyone waking you up, unless you have a really nice roommate. Um, you do your own homework, like go to the library on your own, like you pick your schedule. So it's it was a little bit hard for me because I was used to relying on my family for like maybe rides to school or something and because HWS is a residential campus where you can walk everywhere then um, you just have to make your own schedule and allot that time for it. I didn't really feel homesick surprisingly. I think that maybe hit now with junior year and then ironically I was able to go home and now I want to go back. So I didn't really feel homesick. I know my peers that did they um, went to our resources like the counseling center or the chaplain 
or um, RAs and we've talked with them about that, especially our international students. And usually the best way to deal with that is to have that support system of peers, um, whether it's in your residence halls or in your classes. And basically I just got used to the lifestyle of it by having that schedule. As soon as you set yourself a schedule of work, classes, social events on the weekends, whatever, it's really easy to get into the rhythm of it. And then um, you're still grateful when you go home for those home cooked meals and everything, but you still really appreciate the campus life and having that independence and autonomy over your life. Um, everything is up to you. So I just, I really had a good first month at HWS, I would say. I think that our, our RAs do a really great job, too, of sort of advising and mentoring and role modeling of what a good schedule looks like, right? So the, the RA to student ratio here is small. If you are not waking up for your classes multiple times, chances are your RA is going to know about it. Other students are going to recognize that and say, hey, you know, what's going on? Are you homesick? How can I be helpful? So not just the other students on the floor, but your RA too. Everybody sort of looks out for each other. That being said, your RA is not going to set an alarm and come wake you up, right? That's your own responsibility. But if you're struggling with something, they are an excellent resource who will be able to really help you through all of the traditional concerns of being somewhere new. And that's why we live in the floor, on the floor, and usually right in the middle next to the common room by the floor to be cognizant of these changes in your patterns and, and notice when students are feeling homesick and when we need to give additional support. But always feel free um, to come to the RAs and ask for that um, advice or whatever else, because sometimes we may not pick up on the subtle signals. Um, I know for my residents, I give out um, my number and things like that with, with the um, possibility of them coming to reach out to me and everything like that. So, and then this is our last question for today's session. Um, is it possible to live in a single? That's a great question. So as an upper class student, you have the ability to choose what type of room you want to be in, single, double, suite, apartment, things like that. For first year students, we really try to keep students in a room with a roommate because that's part of the experience. And we see some first year students um, isolate if they don't have that person with them. Not everyone, right? But some uh, tend to, to withdraw. So we do like students to have roommates. That being said, there are some circumstances, some accommodations where a student may need a housing accommodation for a single room. Um, as a, a first year student, what we would say is we have an absolutely amazing disability services coordinator, Kristen Davis, who will work specifically with you on what your needs are and then we'll do everything that we can in residential education to accommodate those needs. Mm -hmm. So that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you all for joining us and giving us these great questions. If you have any further questions, however, um, or you'd like to get in touch with either one of us later on, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'm going to add our emails into the chat. Um, are you adding yours, Shelly? Yep. Okay. And um, Kate has also, from admissions, has also added hers to the chat for any other questions. Um, feel free to reach out. I'm usually pretty available, as is Shelly and Kate. I'm sure this campus is really big on emails. Um, so thank you so much to everyone for jo joining us. Thank you to Shelly for co-hosting and Kate and Craig from admissions for setting this up. And best of luck to all of you as you make your final decision. Have a great day. Bye. Have a great one.